guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Anna Maria Perez de Tagle, and thank you so much for joining me. It is February, the month of love. So what better way to start off the month with a Valentine's Day makeup look using the Morphe 24G Grand Glam Palette. It's going to be a first impressions because I've never used this palette before, so it's going to be a lot of fun in the video today. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe hit that like button down below. I would really appreciate it and hit that notification bell while you are at it. So let's get on with the video. <laughs> Bare face. I do have the eyes primed and set. I use the usual Smashbox lid primer in light. And to set it, I use the Better Skin Maybelline powder. And this is a really good powder to set your eyelids with because it really cancels out the purple, veiny kind of redness on your eyelids if you do have that. And it sets my eyelids pretty well. I never get any creasing, which is good. So for today's look, we are using the Morphe 24G Grand Glam Eye Palette. And the pans on this palette are much bigger than the usual Morphe palettes that we are used to and the colors are so beautiful. They scream Valentine's Day to me. So I wanna play around with this palette. I'm thinking about doing a flirty, smoky eye look. Nothing too crazy because it is Valentine's Day and you don't wanna scare off your date. <laughs> so the first transition shade we're going to use is this one. It's called Frenchie. So we're gonna blend this into the crease very lightly. If you hold your brush closer to the bristles, it's gonna be um, a harder pressure when you're blending. So you wanna make sure to hold it on the very end. My first impression for this shade is really, really, really buttery and no fallout whatsoever, which is really nice. I feel like all eyeshadow palettes should have a transition shade like this because it is very, universal. I like to lift my brows like this so I can see where exactly I'm putting my transition shades and it also shows where my crease is. But I like to go slightly over the crease to give the illusion of a larger eyelid and just more space on the eyelid. For the next transition shade we are going to go in with the shade Glitz. This is the bright pink shadow in the palette. Ooh. It's such a pretty color. So I'm taking this all over the crease, including that inner part, and really focusing it on that area. A little goes a long way with this pink shadow. And I just like to do little circular motions as well as windshield wiper motions. Then I like to go back in with the first crease brush and do a little bit more blending. So for all over the eyelid, I'm gonna use the shade Glossy. That reminds me of something. BTW, your lip gloss is so not glossy anymore. Now I'm swiping this on. Take this all over the lid. There's a little bit of fallout, but I think I think it's okay because we're getting a lot of pigmentation on the eyelid. Okay, there's a lot of fallout, and I'm pretty sure it'll be like this with all the shimmer shades if you don't wet your brush. I'm gonna brush this away. Luckily, once you brush the fallout away, it doesn't just stay on the face. I'm just gonna swipe on this eye. The shadow is super easy to layer as well. Because sometimes there are some shimmer shades that once you layer them, it starts to crumble off. This does not do that. Just take me anywhere, take me anywhere, anywhere away with you. Okay, <laughs> should turn this off. So I kind of experimented with my left eye off camera a little bit. I didn't fully finish the eye look, 
but I decided to do a very soft kind of halo eye. So with a small detail brush, I'm going to take the shade Brew, and this is gonna go on the inner and outer part of the eyelid. Super, super pigmented, but at the same time, very blendable. Somebody is whistling really loud and I can hear it from the second story of my house. You are projecting, sir. I don't want a harsh line between that pink and brown. I'm going to take that same detail brush and then put this on the inner part of the eyelid. My eyelid on my right is a little smaller than my left, so I like to take it up higher to give the illusion of even eyelids. So that's a, that's a good tip to keep in mind. If you do have a smaller crease on one of your eyes, you want to take the shadows a little bit higher. Go around the edges of the pink with the brown cappuccino shade. We're going to use the shade Creamer to blend around the crease shades before doing the brow bone highlight. So this is the shade we're gonna take. Going around the whole eye look, around the crease area. Doing this also cleans up the look as well. With a short shader brush, we're gonna go in with the Shadow Glazed. It's a really nice shimmery white shade. Under the brow bone. I like to take it a little bit inwards as well, but no additional product. I'm just kind of blending it in. To prime, I'm going to use my go-tos, the J1 Jelly Pack all over the face. And then for the T-Zone, I'm going to use the Professional Pearl Primer. Rub between my fingers, and then I just kind of like to over here. Pearl primer. It's on the T zone right here. So for a foundation, I'm going to mix the Dior Skin Forever foundation and the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear foundation. So I'm just gonna mix that on the back of my hand, make my own little concoction, and then apply it to my face with a beauty blender. Really easy to blend into the skin. At the same time, there's a very soft kind of velvety finish on the face and it doesn't dry sticky or anything. It's really, really nice. Don't forget to take it down on your neck so you don't have that harsh foundation line from your jaw to your neck. That's not cute. <laughs> so take it down your neck. So I did my baking already. I'm just gonna swipe this away. And then I'm going to set the rest of my face with a MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Medium Plus. I love this powder because it makes my skin look natural, even though I have foundation, and concealer, and powder. So I have my eyelashes on. I am going to do my lower lash line. I experimented again with the bottom lower lash line on my left eye, and I sort of replicated what we did on the eyelid, but I switched it up a little bit. I put the pink on the inner corner, and I really like how it looks, so I'm gonna do that on this eye for you guys. To highlight the inner corners, we are going to use the same Brow Bone Highlight Glazed. I think you see the color payoff way more once you put it on the inner corner more than the brow bone for some reason, but I really, really, really like it. So for all over the lower lash line, I'm going to go in with the shade Frenchie, and that's just gonna go all over. I'm kind of replicating the top eyelid. And then I'm gonna deepen the outer part of the lower lash line with the same dark shade called Brew. Bring that into the top shadows. And then for the inner part of the lower lash line, I'm gonna go in with Glossy. So I think I'm going to put a brown liner in the waterline, which I don't normally do. I haven't done it in a while at least. I'm using the Maybelline Lasting Drama Waterproof Gel Pencil in Glazed Toffee. So 
So for mascara, I'm using my favorite at the moment, the Maybelline Colossal Big Shot Volume Express in Waterproof. This one. So I'm just gonna do my usual contour, highlight, bronzer, blush routine. And I usually start off with the Anastasia Fawn Contour Kit. Honest, the original contour kit. You know what I'm talking about. I like to use the shade Fawn. And I like this because it's a cool toned contour. So it really gives that illusion of like a shadow. I like a very dramatic contour. Because I like the slim effect that it does for my cheeks because I have somewhat of a round face. And then I like to go on top of that with the Hoola Bronzer. Oops, I forgot to do this too. You want to make sure to put some of that Anastasia Fawn shade on the jawline as well and underneath the chin so you can hide that double chin. Since our eyes are sort of rose gold, I decided to choose a rose gold highlighter from Jouer. So I'm using the Jouer powder highlighter in rose quartz. I'm going to dip my beauty blender, just the tip of the beauty blender into the pan. Again, you just wanna pounce your beauty blender until it's fully melted onto your skin. Wow, that looks wet. <laughs> um, and then, Onto blush. I'm gonna be using the City Color B Matte Blush in Blackberry. This is how it looks. This time I'm actually placing it on the apples of my cheeks because I want that very youthful look. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of highlighter right above my brows. Just for an all over glow. For lips, I'm going to use the MAC Soar Lip Pencil, and I'm going to fill them in as well. And then I'm going to top it off with the Coco by Kylie Cosmetics Gloss in Zam Gina. I chose this lip gloss because it has flecks of pink glitter in it. And we are done. I give the Morphe 24G Grand Glam Palette two thumbs up. The eyeshadows are absolutely beautiful and blendable and just so perfect. <laughs> so I really recommend this palette. Morphe did a great job as usual. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Again, hit that like button down below and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.